Hello, my name is Farooq and welcome to my channel Ministry of Literature. In this video, I'm going to talk about the history of English literature in a little more detailed uh, manner than the previous video. Before we move ahead, do not forget to hit the subscribe button. A lot of students find uh, the topic history of English literature quite challenging. Uh, especially when it comes to remembering it for the exams. It is quite understandable as we are looking at uh, looking back over a thousand years. These are there are several political, social and economic factors that have influenced literature over the ages. To make it easier for us, we have compartmentalized history into smaller chunks. The there are a few characteristics that are common in the works of literature from a particular period. Hence, we group them together. So let's begin with the first age, which is the Old English period, also referred to as the Anglo-Saxon period. The language and literature of the time was highly influenced by the Anglo-Saxons who conquered and ruled Britannia, as it was known earlier, until 1066 when the Norman rule began. There was an abundance of oral lit literature and poetry was uh, particularly uh, appeared in vernacular Anglo-Saxon or the Old English uh, language in the 8th century. One of the best known works of course is the Beowulf. I have posted a video on the age and the poem Beowulf uh, in my channel. Please um, check out the video. The link is in the description. In terms of the political situation of the time, we see that the Angles, Saxons and later Vikings uh, rule the country and influence the language, literature and culture of the place. Cadmin and uh, Kinewulf are two poets from this age whose works were based on religion and Bible they wrote on the biblical themes. We then move to the Middle English period between 1066 and 1580, which begins with the Norman conquest of uh, uh, in 1066 and includes their role over the next 300 years. During this time, the French uh, and Latin languages um, uh, occupy an important position in the um, um, in, in, in England uh, while French becomes the language of the court and Latin becomes the language of the church. The East Midland speech became the language of the capital city and the universities and some sort of a, a standard language. John Wycliffe challenges the authority during this time of the Catholic Church and, and tries to revive the spiritual Christianity in England. Uh, there is also the Lowlid movement, which was uh, uh, like the first important opposition to Catholicism uh, in England to expose the corruption of the church. In 1348-49, a terrible uh, Black Death occurred. It was a plague that was that killed uh, one third of the population of England, and it reappeared in 1362, 67, and 70. And as a result of which, um, the labor became scarce. Uh, this did lead to a lot of political and economic problems. We will look at that in detail in, in the future videos. Literature becomes more secular, especially in the late 14th century with uh, Geoffrey Chaucer, one of the most well-known poets of English literature and was also known as the father of modern English poetry. One of his well-known works is the Canterbury Tales and other works include, um, other popular works of this period include Morta the Author by Thomas Mallory and the anonymous work Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. We then move to the English Renaissance between 1500 to 1660. It begins with the ascent of the House of Tudor uh, to the throne in 1485, where, while the English literature, uh, literary renaissance begins with writers such as Sir Thomas More and Sir Thomas Watt. The age is divided into uh, four periods. The first is the Elizabethan age between 1558 to 1603. 1603 to 1625 is the Jacobian period and 1625 to 1649 is the Carolan uh, age. And finally the 1649 uh, to 1660 is known as the Commonwealth period or the Puritan uh, interregnum. Now let's look at each of these ages briefly. First is of course the Elizabethan age, also considered uh, the golden age in English literature, coinciding with the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. We see a blend of medieval traditions with the Renaissance optimism. Besides uh, lyrical poetry, prose writing and drama reached new heights. Some of the most important writers of the time are William Shakespeare, 
uh, Christopher Marlowe, Edmund Spencer, Sir Walter Raleigh, and Ben Johnson. Of course, uh, not to forget the university wits. We then have the Jacobian age from 1603 to 1625 during the uh, reign of King James I. Prose and drama uh, do become increasingly popular during this time. Uh, one of the important works during this time is also the King uh, James translation of the Bible. And uh, Shakespeare and Johnson continue to write during this age. We also have uh, other poets of this age, including John Donne, the um, popular prose writer Francis Bacon and Thomas Middleton, the poet as well. Now we move to the Carolyn age, which uh, begins with uh, accession of Charles I in 1625 and ends in the execution in his execution in 1649. In, in, it was an age of political upheaval and a constant battle uh, between the royalists and the Puritans. Uh, we had the Cavalier poets writing in support of the monarch and it was an age where the dramatists were the, the last to write in the Elizabethan tradition. Uh, after this, we see that the the way drama was written, consumed, was completely changed, was completely different. As a result of the Civil War, the theatres were closed in 1642 for 18 years, and some of the most popular Cavalier poets include Thomas Carew, Richard Lovelace, Sir John Suckling, etc. And also we, ha we have the metaphysical poetry of this time, including uh, and includes writers such as John Donne, uh, George Herbert, Henry Vaughan, etc. Uh, we move to the Commonwealth period, also known as the Puritan Interregnum, uh, ruled by the Puritan leader Oliver Cromwell. Uh, theatres were closed, as I mentioned, on moral and religious grounds until the fall of the Puritan government in 1660. This period also was known for a lot of political writings of John Milton, who wrote a, quite a lot of uh, pamphlets advocating Puritanism uh, in the lives of uh, the common English man. Thomas Hobbes also was uh, a popular figure, as was the prose writing of Andrew Marvel. We then move to the neoclassical period, uh, which was during the 1660 and 1785, influenced by the contemporary French literature. The literature of the time was known for its philosophy, reason, skepticism, wit, and refinement. Uh, age is also important for the rise of English literary criticism, and uh, we have this further divided into this age divided into three, the Restoration period, the Augustan age, and the age of sensibility, or the age of Johnson. Now, when we look at the first one, uh, that's a restoration period. This is called so because of uh, because the monarchy was rest restored and uh, uh, King Charles II becomes the King of England. Theatres reopened um, and with a dis but, but again with a distinct comedy of manners known as the restoration comedy. It was also during this age that uh, John Milton published his seminal work Paradise Lost and then of course the Par Paradise Regained. Other major writers of this age include John Dryden, uh, quite popular also for his uh, literary criticism, uh, John Wilmot and John Loki. The next is the Augustine Age or the Age of Pope between 1700 to 1745. Uh, of course, gets its name from the period in Roman history under the Emperor Augustus. During this times, the poets strove for a refinement, clarity, elegance, and sort of a balance in their judgment, a uh, balance of judgment in their works. And major writers, of course, include Jonathan Swift, Alexander Pope, and Daniel Defoe. One of the most significant contributions of this period uh, is also the English novel, uh, such as Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. And we also have um, the novel of character, uh, Pamela, written by Samuel Richardson. Now, when we move to the age of sensibility or the age of Johnson, characterized by enlightenment, emphasis on instinct and feeling, uh, rather than restraint and judgment and a growing interest in the medieval ballads and folk literature. We see that Samuel Johnson uh, becomes one of the most notable writers of this time, known for his work such as A Dictionary of the English Language, Lives of the Most Eminent English Poets, etc. And the age also gave us quite a lot of um, important early novels such as Richardson's uh, Clarissa in 1748 and Henry Fielding's Tom Jones. We then move to the Romantic period, 
uh, in during which poetry became a very important genre and uh, this is said to have begun with the publication of the lyrical ballads by Wordsworth and Coleridge in 1789 and uh, of course we we see that literature becomes more personal um, in nature it is also important to note the use of feeling symbolism and also its exploration of, of of nature and the supernatural it is also based on the belief that literature should be spontaneous imaginative personal we remember wordsworth famous uh, quote in which he says that poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions recollected in tranquility besides uh, wordsworth and coleridge we also have robert sati uh, and then again, Lord Byron, Keats and Shelley, who become the very popular poets of this time. And also novelists uh, cannot be ignored. Novelists such as Jane Austen, Walter Scott, Charles Lamb and William Hazlitt. Now, Gothic literature is another contribution of this age. And two of the most popular Gothic novelists were Annie Radcliffe and Mary Shelley. We then move to the Victorian age that was between 1832 to 1901, coinciding with the reign of Queen Victoria. A lot seemed to uh, w happen during this time, and it was also sort of reflected in the literature as it dealt with problems surrounding the Industrial Revolution, growing class tensions, uh, and sort of an early feminist movement, pressures uh, towards political and social reform, um, there was also a lot of impact of Charles Darwin's uh, theory of evolution on philosophy and religion because suddenly you see that religion was was questioned, um, science became uh, the center. So, you know, uh, Charles Darwin's work was important um, with that, with, in that sense. We also see the major writers of the age, including Lord Tennyson, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, um, her husband as well, Robert Browning, and then we, ha we had Matthew Arnold, um, very important critique um, and there's a lot that he contributed to literary criticism. We of course have the novelists uh, Charles Dickens, Charlotte Bronte, George Eliot and Thomas Hardy. We then move to the Edwardian period. Now, the period is named after King Ed Edward VII and ends with the start of the World War I. The writings reflect uh, the social conditions with authors such as G.B. Shaw, A.G. Wells attacking the social injustice and the selfishness of the upper classes. Other writers, uh, of course, poets like W.B. Eads, Joseph Conrad, uh, Kipling, Henry James, E.M. Foster become extremely important. We then move to the Georgian period during the reign of King George V. We have several Edwardian writers continuing to write during this age along with several other Georgian poets. We did have the poets who are now regarded as minor poets uh, and on, an anthology was published um, entitled Georgian Poetry uh, by Edward Marsh during between the 1912 and 1922. That's an important work as well. And then, of course, we move to the modern period and we see that the Great War, that's, that's the first world war, having a major influence on writers during this time. We have authors who experimented with the subject matter, form, style and produced some, some, some really great um, works in, in pretty much uh, in, in a variety of literary genres. We have important poets. Uh, such as Eats, we have T.S. Eliot, uh, Dylan Thomas and Seamus Haney, some of the important ones and uh, some of the important novelists such as uh, James Joyce, D.H. Lawrence, of course Virginia Woolf. And we also have the dramatists including Noel Coward and Samuel Beckett. We then move to the sort of contemporary age, the postmodern period, uh, which, which refers to a sort of social cultural uh, and literary theory um, that was uh, and, and a shift in perspective that we had manifested in a variety of uh, disciplines not just in literature it rejects the boundaries between high and low literature a characteristic uh, from the Victorian times it also goes a step ahead uh, mixing actually these low art and high art and the past into the future or in fact genres with other genres some important writers include Rushdie, Piat, 
uh, Ace Bat, uh, William Golding, Robert Irwin, and Ishiguro, and a lot of other writers um, in the contemporary period. The aim of the video was to familiarize ourselves with the various periods and help us remember them. Now, I'll be discussing each of these uh, different ages in greater detail in the future videos. Let me know what you think about the video. I will post more lessons on my channel, so please subscribe uh, to get notified. Like and share this video, and please stay safe.